Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Lydia, the Halfling Seamstress. It's the start of a new year and in Canada that means it's cold and will be cold until at least the end of March. And so for the first project of 2022, I want to make a cozy petticoat to wear with my walking skirts. I first remember hearing about flannel petticoats while reading The Railway Children, and now that I'm getting more and more into historical dress, it seems like a very practical addition to my wardrobe. When I found a lovely plaid flannel blanket at the thrift store a while back, I knew I had to make one. Now, there have been winter petticoats for centuries using a variety of techniques and materials, but since most of my skirts are in the late Victorian slash Edwardian era, I wanted to stick with a similar style. This basically means a gourd skirt that comes to mid to low calf with a lighter fabric forming the waistband to reduce bulk. So to start out with this basic project, I'm going to use my favorite quick sew pattern, the same one I used in my bag end skirt video. I want this skirt to be extra cozy, so I'm making it double layered, so everything has to be cut out twice. When I was looking online at excellent winter petticoats, I found that most of them had a waistband in a lighter weight material to reduce bulk, and it was often a contrasting fabric. So I thought it would be fun to contrast my petticoat with a little bit of Van Gogh TARDIS fabric. Plus, it uses yet another piece of cabbage from my stash. I wanted it to be a bit wider than usual so that the thicker fabric starts lower on the body, so I cut out the waistband at double width to give me a bit of wiggle room. And since this is a vaguely historical project, I wanted to play with my antique machine again. Every project I make with it makes me more comfortable with its mechanics, and it's just a delight to sew with. Could I have whipped out this project in roughly half the time with my electric machine? Yes, I could have. But this is just so much more fun. I assembled the skirt pieces in two sets, sewing the two back pieces to each front piece and then putting them both together. Before putting the two skirt halves together, I first pressed all the seams open and flat so they would lie nicely. Then I pinned them right sides together and stitched up the long sides, leaving the top and bottom open. I evened out the hem and trimmed off the excess, then I stitched the hem closed, still with the right sides together. Then I flipped it right side out and pressed down the hem seam, and then I top stitched the hem down to make sure it didn't bubble out at all when wearing. This was not designed as a quilted petticoat with batting in the middle, although those were quite popular in previous centuries, but I did want to make sure everything stayed in place. So I marked every six inches and stitched around as an homage to the quilted petticoat style. After I had enough stitching in place, it was time to sew the skirt up into one piece. I pinned the back edges together and stitched all the way up, making sure to leave room at the top for ease of putting on. Then the waistband. I pressed it in half to give me a clear starting line, then I folded in slightly less than halfway in. I pressed those folds down, then folded and pressed it in half again to give me my final dimensions. Because the back seam was a little bulky from four layers of flannel, I didn't want any extra edges folding funny and sitting weird. So I pressed the seams open and overcast them down to hold them in place. Then I was able to pin the waistband in place. It took a little bit of finagling and I did need to make a small pleat on either side, but it all got sorted in the end. Then it gets stitched down by machine on the right side and folded over and fell down on the wrong side. The last thing for this petticoat is the closure. I had seen a couple different options for closing, including using a drawstring with ribbon or twill tape, but I felt like that wouldn't be the best option for reducing bulk at the waistline, so I opted for a few hooks and eyes. Since it's a wider waistband, I went with two sets of hooks and eyes. I also added a third set of hooks and eyes partway down the skirt opening just to help hold things together. And as I was finishing up my cozy petticoat, I got joined by my cozy sewing buddy. Sleepy poodles make for good sewing companions. 
And it's done! And apparently it also doubles as a comfy blanket for sleeping poodles. Now, because the goal with this project was to make something specifically to keep me extra warm when wearing my long skirts, I feel like the best way to fully test if this project is a success is by testing it in the environment it's going to be used in. So, let's go take a walk. So, with the wind chill, it is minus 20 Celsius, which is minus 4 Fahrenheit, I think. It's cold. But I can honestly say that right now, the coldest part of me is my forehead. It's cold. <laughs> but the skirt, the petticoat, they are working so well. Everything from the neck down is toasty toasty. Okay, final wrap up. I was out for about half an hour doing shoots and I wore my Captain Mal Reynolds lined waterproof winter boots. I wore fleece lined tights, my petticoat, my wool lined walking skirt, my wool coat, my linen pirate shirt and a wool scarf and my earmuffs because my ears get chilly very fast. and. I don't feel that cold. I mean, okay, my face feels cold. And everything that was covered up feels nice and toasty. I was sweating inside before I came outside. But out here, this is so comfy. I mean, it's, it's all natural fibers, but it's the layers and the layers are comfy and they don't impede my movement at all. It's really comfy and I really like it and I am definitely going to wear this more in the winter. So for now I am going to go inside, drink some hot tea, warm up and get my footage sorted because my battery died part way and I had to swap cameras. So now I have footage on two cameras. I'm rambling. I don't do unscripted very well. Um, yeah, I'm going to sort out my footage and warm up because my face is chilly. Everything else is toasty, but my face is chilly. You got your snowy snoot. Look at your snowy snoot. <laughs>